Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to Beating the Press Podcast. I am your host, Rafa. Now, coming up in this evening's podcast, we're going to be taking a look at the two teams at the top of the table and they are running towards the EPL title. Man City plays host to Wolves and Arsenal plays host to Bournemouth. Now, joining me this evening to preview these matches and to talk some EPL football, we have returned into the podcast, Christoph. Good to be back, viewers. Yes, indeed, Christoph. Two big matches coming up. The season is boiling down and all attention is on this title race. Who will blink first is the question. Arsenal taking on Bournemouth at home and Man City also playing at home taking on Wolves. Let's let's start by looking at the Arsenal game though, Christoph. Can Bournemouth create an upset is the question or will Arsenal continue on their winning ways? Um, It's the EPL. I mean, anything can happen. If Arsenal become lax or complacent, as we saw against Tottenham, you know, we saw those um kind of cracks creeping in to their game, then yeah, Bournemouth can capitalize. But um more important for Bournemouth is that Arsenal does not concede a lot of chances. So for them it's more a matter of taking those chances that you do get uh, playing on the counter attackers. Arsenal will look to dominate possession, look to control the game, and look to create chances. But it's also the same issue for Arsenal that they will definitely create chances, but will they score them? And that was their downfall a couple of weeks ago against Aston Villa, creating the chances, but not making the most of them. And then Aston Villa hitting on the counter attack to devastate in effect. Uh, so there is, there are. There are going to be chances for Bournemouth to win, for them to upset Arsenal, but it's for Arsenal to go and do the business, keep focus and get the goals from chances and don't, you know, don't go, don't go, you know, missing everything, you know, like how we've seen Liverpool play in maybe the last five, six weeks. We've seen Liverpool create a number of chances, but not um finishing them and perhaps had they been finishing them then they would still be in the title race. Uh but that that is what Arsenal will have to do, taking those chances. They will create definitely. Um they just need to take the chances and Bournemouth will have fewer chances but will have to capitalize on what they get. Their best bet would be um defending a mid to low block and then hitting on the counter attack as we've seen many teams do against Arsenal and teams that see joy and get goals against Arsenal that's what they tend to do they play on the counter attack not many teams you know break down Arsenal and get those goals uh indeed definitely a comprehensive also there uh Bournemouth, uh, interestingly, is one of those teams which, you know, have taken points off Man City, which is the next team really in this title race. So they do have enough firepower, I believe, you know, with the likes of a Solanke leading the line to really put up a stern test versus this Arsenal team and indeed this Arsenal defense. And as we know, you know, pressure. Is a hell of a thing, you know, if Bournemouth was to go ahead and take the lead, Arsenal may very well throw the numbers forward and then leave gaps in behind, as you said, for Bournemouth to really capitalize on the counter. So the ball is definitely still around. I don't believe any of these games is really a gimme game. You know, uh, Arsenal will still have to go there and really earn the points versus, a de- I would say, a decent enough team you know this is no pushover team this is a team which have occupied in and around the mid table all season uh they are not one of those teams which was flirting with relegation for example they have been comfortable in my opinion all season just remaining uh in that mid table uh position so this is a team which does have enough quality within their ranks to really put up a good test versus this Arsenal squad. But Krista, from a tactical point of view, do you see Arteta making any specific changes for this game? Or will we see a continuation of those players which have been getting the business done? Um, I 
I don't know if he will make any changes. It's possible, but I think the best approach would be to stick to what has been working these few weeks, and then you make your changes half time. You have five substitutions. You can make two changes at half time and still have three subs, um, without it counting towards your stoppages. Uh, indeed, and you know Kai Havertz seemed to be the man who have really taken over the mantle and getting the goals. Christoph, I mean, he seemed to have been Jesus and he is the number one option as it relates to spearheading that Arsenal attack a man who Chelsea discarded and a man who the fans really were becoming impatient with but are we now seeing the genius of the signing from Arteta coming to fruition um quite possibly he has been you know brilliant once he got going he he gives Arsenal a very Unique dynam dimension, you know, he's over, he's what, I think 6'3", 6'4", so he is there to win headers, knockdowns, and so on. But he's also technically gifted enough to drop off deep into midfield, uh, like we saw against Chelsea, where he dropped deep into the midfield and then to send that pass forward over to Odegaard, leading to a goal, you know. um, It's a very interesting signing. There is definitely a lot of technical ability and art. Arsenal and Arteta seem to be making the most of it at the moment. Ah, indeed, indeed, definitely. Uh, an infarm player at the moment, you know, uh, the goals keep coming. And defensively, Arsenal did ship two versus uh, Spurs in their final game. But usually, it's a sound defensive unit for Arsenal. And, you know, they need to get back to basics where defending is concerned. But, Chris, if in terms of a scoreline, what says you? How do you predict this one? Um, At the moment, I'm going to go with 3-0 win to Arsenal. 3-0 win to the Arsenal, keeping the pressure on Man City. For me, I definitely think Arsenal will also come away winners. However, I believe Bournemouth will get a consolation goal. So, I'm going to go 3-1 to the Arsenal in that regard. So 3-1 win to Arsenal, uh, men who should maintain the pressure on Man City heading into these final set of fixtures. And speaking of Man City, that's the next game on our agenda. They take on Wolves at home, Christoph. And this is another massive game for Man City. They literally can't afford to drop any points at this moment. And... Wolves is one of those teams which beat them in the first leg. So can we expect an upset in this one, Christoph? Or will we see Man, Man City continue to churn out the wins as they have been doing of late? Um, well, it's the type of game where you expect Man City to continue and churn out that result. And that's kind of what I've, I'm expecting. Wolves did win their last game, but it's one win in their last five. The farm has looked poor. They've not looked good. They are, you know, safe from relegation and they're not in any um danger of winning any European um uh, place position. So mm. I'm not expecting that they will put up much of a fight, so to speak. You know, the players job done for them. I, I don't know. I don't see them doing anything really. Um it would be it would be shocking if Man City lost or even drew that game, to be honest. Uh, stranger things have happened, though, Christoph. Stranger things have indeed happened, and we often see over the years where teams have what you classify as a bogey team. You know, that team which seem to always give them trouble, regardless of how they're playing. I'm not sure if Wolves is Man City's bogey team. However, over the years, they are one of the teams which have taken points of Man City and this is another opportunity for an upset to really set the cats amongst the pigeons. And I mean, as you mentioned, this is a team which is not in any danger of being relegated. Neither are they pushing for any of the European spots. So that may give the players a level of freedom for them to go out there and express themselves in circumstances which usually they would not necessarily find themselves. And that could be a freeing moment for the players. And it could possibly elevate their game to the next level when that pressure is off and of course the pressure is off for Wolves but definitely the pressure is on for Man City and you know any sort of goal from Wolves could possibly 
apply even greater pressure, which as we know, when pressure tolls, then anything is possible. But Man City should be experienced enough. They have been there. They have done that. Uh, they have been showing the patience over the period. But if Wolves are able to hold out at halftime and go deep into the second half, then again, anything can happen. Pep may very well have to throw the numbers forward. And then that may lead to some openings, which possibly Wolves could exploit. Of course, they do have the firepower to hurt this Man City team. He Chang is back amongst the goal. Cunha, the Brazilian, is also back from injury and really playing some quality football, especially in that last game, coming up with an assist. So the players are there, the players are available, and anything is really possible. But particularly, Christoph, will we expect Pep to continue his rotation policy or is it best 11 right now with three, go three games to go? Um, I, I would expect Man City to continue rotating. I, there are a number of players that we probably expect to see continue. We know that the back line will probably stay the same, and we know Rodri will start because Man City struggles without Rodri. And we can probably expect Phil Foden to continue, given his very good form at the moment, and probably Kevin De Bruyne. And then you know the other slots might see some rotation. Uh, I expect to see Erling Haaland back in the starting lineup at the moment, and we would probably see Bernardo Silva since he's been playing well. Um, so there's probably just one slot left for rotation there. But um, yeah, that's what I'm, I, I'm expecting the back line to stay the same, goalkeeper to stay the same. Roger um, must play. Well, I mean, I, I have been reading of late that the goalkeeper Ederson is out with a shoulder injury. So uh, the backup Keeper Ortega may very well come in for Edison. Did, and, did Ed, Edison, Edison did Edison play the last game for Man City? I don't recall Ed, Edison playing. Yeah, yeah, he has been. Remember, he was out injured uh, right. from that Real Madrid game, and ah, I believe yeah. he made a comeback, but then picked up another uh, injury. I am reading, so it might not be surprising if he missed out on this game and then the backup goalkeeper uh, slots in. But, I mean, I don't believe that would uh, weaken this Man City team by any great degree. But, again, anything is possible. Uh, Ortega is a less experienced keeper than Edison, of course, and have seen less speech time. So you can never tell an error or two might be there for the exploiting by Wolves, especially if that pressure begins to tell. So all of these are small details, which in the bigger scope of things may prove significant uh, depending on the outcome. But I expect a full Man City uh, 11, uh, possibly the best 11 at Pep's disposal. As you mentioned, Erling Haaland should be back. He started on the bench in their previous game. Uh, Alvarez got the start. But Haaland came on and he definitely troubled the score sheet. So he should be running into some form and definitely confident to get the start uh, in this one versus Wolves. So, Christoph, in terms of your predicted scoreline, however, for this game, what says you? Um, I'm going to go with 4-0 Man City. 4-0 Man City. Ah, that's a big scoreline. I am not sure I am so confident. Uh, of Man City getting four pass Wolves. I do expect Man City to win, but by four goals, uh, no, I don't really see it. I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, a 2 nil. I believe uh, Man City should have enough firepower to get past this Wolves team, and I don't think they will be in any great hurry to really up the scoring, so to speak. You know, if they get a comfortable lead, Pep may very well start rotating out his more key assets in looking forward to uh, a double uh, game week down the line where they'll have to play uh, two games in a matter of, I believe, five days. And then, of course, you know, that final game coming up. So I am predicting Man City to win, but 
by a score line of two goals to nil versus this Wolves team. This Wolves team is not bad enough, Christoph. So I, I, I don't think we should definitely write this team off. And as you mentioned, they are really not in the hunt for any European positions. Neither are they uh, trying to fight off relegation. So they are in that comfort zone. And as I said, oftentimes this may be a freeing experience for players where they express themselves and that could get the best out of them. But we'll definitely have to watch this one and see but, how it um, pans out. That could that could be a double-edged sword for the players guys. it could leave a lot of space and gaps in their defensive unit. Players That's a possibility forward, as well. You know, as well being... as losing that tactical discipline. Right. Sure. So, I, I mean, it, it, it's a possibility. But oftentimes, if you're going to beat a team like Man City, you have to take some risk. You have to take some chances in order to really get a goal or two. So, who to tell? This may be the catalyst for such a, a game, you know. Uh, but I wouldn't call this one a gimme neither. You know, as I said, pressure is a hell of a thing. And oftentimes at this end of the season, that is one of the key factors to consider. But I believe Man City, as I said, Pep has enough experience and there's, of course, enough quality in the team, both in the starting level, as well as any changes coming from off the bench can really come into the game and impact the game. The likes of Adoku or even a Grealish, if they don't get the start, can really come into the game. Alvarez is another one, you know, a World Cup winning uh, player. And he has been finding some form of late as well. He was the one who slotted in for Haaland while he was out injured and really kept this Man City team turning over results and here we are three games to go and they are pretty much leading the league so it just goes to show the sort of quality that is in the squad and of course the brilliant managerial uh job that pep have been doing ever since he took over this team as well you know credit must be given to the coaches at this point in time you know it is pep christoph who also mentored arteta you could say it, it oftentimes when these two managers clash, it's oftentimes dubbed uh apprentice versus the master or master versus the apprentice. You know, where uh Arteta was Pep's assistant for a number of years, and that is where he really learned his trade, learned his craft as a manager. And you know, I'm sure that relationship and that gratitude will be there up to the very end. But it's definitely boiling down. I mean, Liverpool is out of it, so it's really down to who will win it, Arsenal or Man City. And these are two big games that should be coming up on the weekend. Of course, Christoph, other teams are also in action. Uh, Liverpool versus Spurs. How do you see that one playing out? Well, that's a, 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 that's a, a, a difficult call. Um <laughs> Liverpool is in poor form. Spurs is clearly in poor form, having lost to Chelsea today in um strange fashion. But you know, it's like I said, you know, Spurs Spurs can keep position all they want if they don't score. It doesn't matter. And it kind of looks like Spurs might be running out of steam as we see them do at the end of almost every season. Well, definitely. They have run out of steam, is not the case of might be. <laughs> They have definitely run out of, <laughs> of, of steam. This was a prime opportunity versus Chelsea to really uh, push hard at Aston Villa for that final European position. And we see now with Dortmund beating PSG in the Champions League, Christoph, it is now Germany which have gotten that fifth Champions League spot. So that is indeed official. Germany is the, is the, is the country that will be guaranteed that fifth Champions League slot and ironically it is Dortmund who currently occupies fifth in the Bundesliga and it is that same team which is in the semi-finals of the Champions League so if I that recall, is indeed official if I recall isn't there a new Champions League format next season well, there might be a new format, but in terms of the teams which will be selected to participate, it remains four for uh, England, England and five for Dortmund. So it, it really, that that's a result which really ensures that the, the slots in England remain at four. And currently it is Aston Villa, which is in prime position 
for that uh, a slot in the Champions League come next season, you know. So Spurs pretty much dropped the ball on this one uh, versus Chelsea and looking now ahead to this match versus Liverpool, this could almost be considered somewhat of a dead rubber, almost, you know, but it should be an interesting match. It should be a tight game. Uh, I see lots of goals in this one. Uh, it will be interesting to see the relationship, if it has further deteriorated between Salah and Klopp. So that is definitely one storyline. I'll be looking to see how that plays out. But lots still to play for. But in terms of a predicted score for that one, Christoph, how do you see that one really finishing? Um, at the moment, I'm going to go with a two-all draw. Um, both teams in, in poor form. It, it is a game where both teams would be looking to bounce back. But at the moment, I, I can't decide um, between the two. So I'm going to go with two-all draw. Two-all draw is a good call, definitely. Uh, I do think the Anfield crowd will have an effect on this game. And I think Liverpool will want to send Klopp off on a high note. Uh, so I do believe Liverpool will dig deep for this one and come up with a win. So for me, I'm going to go with a 2-1 victory for Liverpool. Of course, again, this was one of those early controversial games, Christoph, where the referee really blundered in denying Liverpool what was a fairly legal goal, that, that Diaz gold was denied you know, after we saw uh, behind the scene footage of the VAR referee say giving the clear signal that hey, goal was good, or you know, a lot of bumbling in the background as it related to really coming up with a decision for that poor, uh, you could say, or is it poor or late offside call? But the end result of it was a legitimate goal was chalked off, and it eventually led to Liverpool losing that game and you know that's one of the results which in the bigger scope of things you could look back on and say hey that's part of the reason uh the title challenge fell short so to speak so i'm sure that will be in the back of the player's mind as well and they'll be looking to get revenge on the spurs team which clearly as we said have run out of steam uh i believe angie's a good coach however though christoph that is my feeling on this coach so I believe with a dip in the transfer window come in the summer, getting rid of some of the Deadwood players who really does not fit his profile or his philosophy as a coach, I'm sure we can expect a bigger, better Spurs team come next season. But I do believe this coach really possesses the capabilities and the quality to really flourish in the EPL. And I'll be looking to see what he can do given the backing in the transfer window with the Spurs team and see if they can definitely make a push come next season. But sometimes Amaija needs time, a few transfer windows to really get in the quality players he requires and, of course, get out some of those negative influences which are not really contributing significantly to the success of the club. And, I mean, many changes should be taking place over there at Liverpool as well. Any prospects on... Uh, 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 the search for Klopp's replacement, Christoph? Um, I think, did, didn't we hear that it would have been either the, um, I don't remember what the name was, but I saw a name somewhere from the... I've the, been hearing of links being made to the fine art coach, Slot. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been hearing. Yeah, I mean, coming out of the Dutch league, I mean, we seem to be, <laughs> the EPL seem to be inheriting a number of animals, so to speak. You know, we have the Ten Hag <laughs> over there at Manchester United. And it, then if 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 we were to get slot <laughs> over there at Liverpool, you know, it, it's a lot of interesting names coming into the EPL indeed. But we'll have to wait and see how this one plays out uh, in terms of a possible replacement for Klopp. We also see Bayern Munich over there in Germany really struggling to find a replacement for Tuchel as well. Uh, the last I heard was that the former Manchester United coach, Ragnik, who is now in charge of the Austrian national team, who are indeed in this year's Euros being held in Germany, has really... Uh, what should I say, rejected or have said no to the approaches of Bayern Munich 
this time. So Bayern Munich having no missed out on Zabi Alonso, have no missed out on Ragnik. So it will be interesting to see who they turn to next in terms of taking over the reins from Tuchel, who have announced that he will be leaving as Bayern Munich manager come the end of this season. Again, over there in Spain, we saw Zabi had made a similar announcement only weeks later to retract this announcement. So he seemed to be staying at Barcelona. But some very interesting announcement, though, Christoph. I find it curious that these managers are coming out with these announcements before the season is even over. It's I, I can't recall any other time in recent history where this was the case. Can you? I, I can't recall when so many managers have been making statements about this. But um, usually managers make the statements before the end of the season that, hey, I'll be leaving at the end of the season. For the most part, um, there have been a case where uh, managers come and then on final days when they, they make that um, statement, you know, uh, the biggest example would be Sir Alex Ferguson after winning the title saying, hey, I'm retiring. I won't become returning next season. And yeah, everyone. I mean, as I said, it could have... It's a double-edged sword. It could push players to perform better, as we saw, I believe, with Liverpool to a large extent, you know, especially winning that Carling Cup. That that announcement came a couple of weeks before that Carling Cup final. So I thought the announcement had a positive effect on the players. But then, as we saw now, where the results have basically faded away, where results have gone sour, we are also seeing a number of fallouts in terms of relationships, the biggest one being Salah, where you know players are now looking ahead. Now that you're out of the, the title runnings, so to speak, you're now looking ahead to the future in terms of, okay, Klopp won't be there next season. What do I look for next? And we saw a bit of indiscipline, you could say, creeping in. So uh, it will be interesting to see how these players, again, over there in Bayern, we saw... We could say it has had a positive effect on that Bayern Munich team, you know, drawing with Real Madrid in that first leg semi final. So it, it, it depends on the team, it depends on the players, it depends on the result. It could go wrong or it could have a positive effect, so to speak. But we'll have to wait and see who the replacements are. But usually during the summer, there's a lot of turnover in terms of managerial positions. So oftentimes, club try to get in their managers as soon as possible to get a settled unit and start making some moves in that transfer window. And of course, preparing for the next season, you know, with preseason friendlies, etc., etc. But any final thoughts, Christoph, on this weekend's set of football fixtures coming up? Um, another important weekend for both Man City and Arsenal. You know, the title race could be decided at any moment. Both teams need to continue winning in order to secure that title. Ah, definitely, definitely. I could not agree with you more. It's a massive weekend of football, especially at the top of the table. Uh, that seemed to be the key race which is really on outside of those teams battling out, battling it out for relegation in the basement. But in terms of it, it started off as, as such a tightly contested uh, push towards the finale. But Liverpool have faded away and Spurs have faded away as well, which would have been given some competition to Aston Villa in that fourth uh, uh, place. But those races seem to have been run uh, Liverpool in third currently, pretty much out of the, the 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 title race, and I don't believe Aston Villa will be able to overtake them in third either. So Liverpool is pretty much playing free football at this point in time. Really, nothing more to achieve. I believe the highest they'll finish is third, and I don't believe they have any worry of finishing outside the the top four. So. It, again, it could be a freeing experience for teams such as Liverpool, but all attention will be on Arsenal and Man City. Those are definitely the games to watch. And I'm sure while each game is going on, the opposition fan will be cheering for the underdog. So I'm sure the Arsenal fans will be backing Wolves foot and nail 
And of course, when Arsenal is in action, then the Man City fans will be cheering on Bournemouth to get a result there. So it definitely should be a fun field weekend of football action. And of course, many more matches are also taking place. You know, Chelsea is in action versus West Ham over there in London. Another big London derby there, ninth versus 10th. Indeed, Chelsea have leapfrogged uh, West Ham in recent time, having started off so promising. So Chelsea... Possibly pushing for one of those Europa Conference League positions, Christoph. They are only three points off Manchester United. And it will be interesting to see how the results play out for the remainder of the season as it relates to those minor European positions. But Chelsea have definitely climbed up and is now in that race for those minor European Europa Conference League position. They could yet finish as high as eight in the league, you know, still mid-table all season. And definitely it has been a disappointing one for the likes of a Manchester United, a, a Chelsea, you know, teams which are usually up at the top of the league competing for titles and Champions League. But it is what it is. It's a cycle. And these teams are just going through their cycles at this point in time. But there you have it, viewers and subscribers. I'd just like to thank Christoph again for really coming through and really sharing his thoughts and his opinions. And indeed, I'm hearing, Christoph, that today is your birthday. So happy birthday and a bless up on the earth strong. And may you live to see many more. Thank you. Yes, indeed, viewers and subscribers. So, again, viewers, thanks for logging in to us here on Beating the Press Podcast. Of course, help us to continue our growth by sharing, liking, leaving a comment. And, of course, if you haven't subscribed as yet, hit that subscription bell. But until next time, this is Rafa signing off.